giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. All right, we're going to take some of our questions live from the chat. Uh, I apologize if you put a question in and we don't get to it. We have like 30, I think, on a page right now. So I'm going to get to as many as I can. Uh, oh my. Okay. <laughs> all right. First it's like question. you guys are popular or something. Yeah, I don't know. That's like, mm. Wow, surprising. Uh, T Steel 3739 asks How has your team changed Stony Creek since 2007? Have your alumni increased the amount of industry in your town? Very unique question. <sighs> the majority of our in, of alumni who have been really successful have ended up typically moving out of the area. Um, so within Stony Creek, I, there hasn't been a, a huge impact of our alumni in our hometown. Other I, cities, yes, I mean, but at home, not so much. I mean, how big is Stony Creek? Is it? Is it a, I mean, it's like a oh. suburb size, or what are we talking here? It's For those not like... Americans, not. Really. <laughs> yeah. It's not like. Very. I don't know exactly how to describe the size. Uh, we're actually Small. growing a lot. Like there's, yeah, it, it's well, it's not tiny, tiny, but like it's it's a growing city. Like there's a lot, lot of, you know, it's really expensive to live in Toronto, so everyone's starting to move out and commute inward. So there's mm -hmm. been a lot of housing going up. So we're actually starting to grow. We just got like this big plaza opened up recently. There's a lot of townhouses going in. So, you know, I feel like we're growing, would be the best answer I think right now. All right, cool. Uh, Dennis Das Menes uh, would like to ask, what is your favorite part about being on 2056? Maybe a quick answer from all three of you. The people on the team. I like to think I've made a lot of good friends from the Aww. team, and they're all super funny and sometimes silly. <laughs> we're just going to end with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of agree with Eric. You know, I've, a lot of my friends I've met through robotics, um, you know, it's given me kind of a hard lesson that, you know, I have to, I definitely have to get to organize my time well that so I can go in and, you know, work on the robot because, you know, school comes before robotics, unfortunately. Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody disagrees. Um, <laughs> no, schools are really important. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite part about being on 2056 it's a really cool group of people to work with. So, yeah, I, I would know. agree with Eric's sentiments. After all, guys, it's not about building the robot, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's about winning, guy. Uh, it's not about uh, winning, but it is about mm, building a robot. Okay, okay. sorry, my mistake. <laughs> winning is a lot of fun, though. <laughs> 15 Sanjay 15 would like to ask, how do you set up your electrical system uh, in the robot? So that's kind of a wide ranging question, I feel like, but answer. So it like, got... like, how do we put like the electronics or like, how do I mean, we do you set up like where? Are you guys using PWM? Oh, okay. I don't know. Anything you can tell us about the electronics, I guess. I don't know. It's open for interpretation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we use... Uh, we do use CAN, um, and we're, you know, we use a CAN bus so that, you know, connects everything. Um, we don't normally use PWM. We might, I think the only thing that we've used it is for the RSL. Uh, we use a lot of, um, talons and vectors for, mo as motor controllers for, you know, the drivetrain, for our elevator, for our wrist, uh... I don't know. Do you have anything to say as the programmer in communicating with these electronics? Um, no. <laughs> so pretty um, much any smart device we're using yeah. uh, a Talon SRX. Um, any uh, follower devices or um, mechanisms where we don't need to do closed loop feedback, we'll use um, vectors for. Uh, and all, all of our speed controllers are over CAN these days. Um, do we have the screen share up right now? We did. We did. Yeah. And we so did. there's a there's a layout of well, what the bottom plate of the robot ends up looking like. So um, Rio's there, um, Talons and Victor's along the back, PDP in the center. Um, we try to lay out the electrical control board uh, prior to fabrication, so um, we know where everything goes. That there's actually space for everything. 
we find that having a, a good layout ahead of time or at least a good plan um, can get you started in the right direction rather than you know trying to cram speed controllers into an already built robot after the fact um, which can be time consuming and costly so sure um, yeah we're all about all about talons and vectors um, motion magic that guys across the road do an amazing job on uh, on all of that stuff so we're big cross the road fans mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Electronica One would like to ask, is moving sideways a waste of time? Why or why not? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Opinions? Hot takes? So I'd say actually our team's been trying to convince Tyler to let us fill a swerve drive. Oh, <laughs> swerve <laughs> drive so cool. have the debate live on air. Here we go. <laughs> you know, we've... Uh, simple is our big priority and swerve is anything but simple but madtown was really good <laughs> it's um, really fun yeah there's so, no big day anymore there is no bag day anymore Ooh, it sounds like they're starting to get to you tyler <laughs> <sighs> we'll we'll see we'll see that, that i'll I'll, I'll give you that. We'll see. All right, everybody. You heard it here first. On um, first updates now, 2056 doing Swerve in 2020. Put it in the bank. All right. Uh, for uh, first updates now, uh, Tyler would like to ask, why do Canadian teams take forever to list off sponsors during a line selection? Because it is courteous to list all the people that has helped us get there. Boom. All, <laughs> all of them? No, well, just the big ones. Just the big all right. ones. Because, you know, they, they help the most. Tyler, it's not their fault that they fundraise a lot of money. They're just good. <laughs> that, all right, that's fair. I'll give them that. Yeah. Don't hate, don't hate the player. The line selection takes like an extra 20 minutes in any, any Canadian event, though. We have we have sponsorship levels, and one of the sponsorship level is named partner. And that's you are um, OP Robotics with CNC Woodcraft, Innovation First International, and Grid Pass Solutions. And if you're one of the named partners, your 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 name is is, is our name. And it's um, apparently named on air at first updates now too. That's an excellent name drop, by the way. Absolutely. Um, so <laughs> th there are like robot partners that are you know they get on the robot, and then there are named partners who are that you know cut above. So no, one, us, thing, yeah. one thing I just want to say, I, I do really appreciate you stating that like this is something that you have as a benefit to sponsors, because uh, for that. That that really just shows like, hey, you know, we do really care about you to that level, and it, it's not just like, hey, we just do it because everybody else is doing it. This no, this is a benefit that we promise our sponsors. These are things that they get out of it. I think that's great. Yeah, and like you know, for us, um, relationship with our sponsors is very important. So one of the things we do is like our more local uh, sponsors. Uh, they, there's a local there's a local festival called the Winona Peach Festival, and we always have students and we're and volunteering at those to you know kind of show our appreciation for what they're doing for us um a lot of times we also go into sponsors companies and might do a demonstration of a robot explain you know you know this is what this is what the, the money that you're giving us is going into all right um all right we're gonna try to go a little bit quicker just because we still have like a million questions to get to and i know we're getting a little low on time uh so next question is uh let's see Will your team ever select the Western District event? London would love to see you there. So, and Tyler, any chance? Um, I mean, the last couple of years, Western has been the same weekend as McMaster. So, as long as they're on the same weekend, we're not we're not coming. Unless we don't get into McMaster, then I guess there's a possibility. It's really hard. To, it's really hard to turn down going to an event that you don't have to stay overnight for. It just saves money. Yeah. So, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, all right. Another question from 15 Sanjay 15 asks, uh, how do you organize your pit and keep it clean? Okay. Um, uh, so Mr. packs our trailer. He kind of does it like in this, the most complicated Tetris, Tetris 3d version. It's like, he just fits everything in that one trailer and then we all pack it out. And then, uh, he just knows like, in his how to put it all back together. Um, we have those shells, which helps, you know, like, set the different bins of like bolts and pneumatics and different electrical stuff uh we always try to keep our pit clean and the moment we're done with something we put it back away because you know if we have a bunch of stuff laying around things get messy and we might lose something we might trip something might break so it's all about making sure everything's in its place and then once we're done with it it goes back away all right uh next question comes from c sherman uh and they're asking 
2056 typically does not make any significant robot changes during competition season, even as the meta evolves in other directions. What were the reasons that you have avoided large changes in the past, and will that be changing this year without the bag? Hmm. Um, I mean, the only thing that we really thought about changing this year was adding a vacuum climber. Um, and we, we just didn't have the weight and didn't really integrate well into the design of the current machine. Um, but usually we don't really have too much to change. Um, just get it right the first time, right? <laughs> uh, I, I think r real quick, I think uh, the, the, something that I see as an outsider's perspective is that 2056 does make iterations and changes, but that they're not just major structural things, right? They're things that, that I think is just more practice and getting a lot of stuff you might not see uh, in person while still having a, a great superstructure at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. There are there are little design changes and little tweaks that we make along the way. Like if we see that, uh, if we find a failure point on the practice robot, we correct it on the competition robot before the competition robot ever sees the playing field. Um, so there are little little changes and tweaks we make along the way, but um, we've been very fortunate the last number of years to kind of get it right the first time. I mean, I think, I mean, it probably comes down to kind of getting the big things right. So like making it where, you know, if, if you're going to need to make a change, maybe it's on the collector or something, but not needing to really change the drivetrain elevator, the stuff that's kind of like your, your more like, you know, central systems, because that's the stuff that is probably much harder to change and yeah, also the, be the most noticeable, right? The biggest design change we've made in recent years was our shooter in 2017. Um, we originally designed it to be an up close shooter, but uh, the whole side of the shooter mechanism was designed with these two big removable plates so that if we had to change the geometry of it, we could just re refabricate these two small plates. And uh, we changed from a close range shooter to a ranged shooter um, at McMaster and uh, saw much, much better success like that. So we designed it in such a way that we could make the changes in the future if we needed to without you know, chopping the whole top of the robot off kind of thing, <laughs> which we've done right. before. <laughs> yeah. Just not in competition season. <laughs> uh, let's see. What, uh, let's see what question, because I can't take all of them, unfortunately. Uh, Bob, uh, Bob Zidkoff, Bob Zidkoff uh, is asking, what did your team do as pre-comp prep that others may not do? There's a lot of practice that our driver does. Uh, I don't know how much practice other drivers get, but our driver is there as often as he can be. We have lunches, then he's in there. Um, when I say in there, we have a, a room that we make a mock field out of. It's just too small, so it's like three-fourths or like even five-sixths of a field. But either way, he's in there like all the time. He's in there during lunches. He's in there during 15-minute breaks. Last year, he even had an online class that he may have spent less time doing classwork and more time practicing with. Um, <laughs> it, it was time, ISU, so it's like, technically was okay, I guess. Spends, spends as much time as he can driving. Um, and I think that really helps. All right, fair enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you work on, this is coming from Mac 6875, uh, do you work on perfecting new possible designs over this off season? Um, like, is there anything you're working on this off season, like mechanism wise at all? Uh, we generally don't do a lot of prototyping or off season development, um, mainly because at the end of the season, we're tired and we want to do other things with our lives. Um, <laughs> There's other things to life than robots, Tyler. Really? <laughs> we have openly discussed a swerve. Swerve. I mean, we've already confirmed it, so we know it's happening. You don't have to be coy. Come on, Tyler. But beyond discussions, <laughs> there, that, not a lot has really happened. We do our SolidWorks training on, on usually on Tuesday nights, mm -hmm. actually, right now, um, which we're postponing until tomorrow because of this show. Um, we appreciate that. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, uh, this is specific to this year, it looks like. Uh, Chezzy or Cheesy uh, HS would like to ask any insights into strategy for semis at Worlds. 
For instance, why so few null panels? Uh, because we scored a lot in Sandstorm. Yeah, I mean, that seems like the straightforward answer. <laughs> like I don't our, know if they wondered about anything else more specific, but... Um, yeah, we uh, the Alliance as a whole... Uh, you guys did five, right? Or you were we going went, for five? Uh, I think in the third semis, we missed one. So we hit four of the five. Yeah. And our auto, our auto was structured so that we would score two and then park in front of the open port yep. so that we basically caught the ball out of auto. And then we would score it in the third bay right beside it. So right. it allowed us to get one cycle off in like three seconds. So hmm. on, on our side anyways, having so few null panels allowed us to, you know, maximize our cycle time. Um, Mm. And it gave us more options that if the rocket was heavily defended, you could turn and go to, uh, go to the, was that the thing called? Ship. The cargo ship. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about the game a whole lot in the last little while. Um, yeah, yeah no, it, it gave us opportunities for when the D came, and the D came very, very hard. Oh, did the D come? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Moving on. Uh, snap sword. Uh, would like to ask, do you guys run your actual... Oh, I just got moved, sorry. Um, oh, I don't know, the question changed, but that's all right. Uh, Snap Sword would like to ask, what was your favorite game and why? Round table? Yeah. yeah. I start. I like Aim High. I'm an old man, but I like Aim Ooh. High. Yeah. Aim High was good. Uh, kids that are, I'm sure you guys aren't going to reach back quite as far. Nope. Um, I liked Steamworks a lot. I wasn't so involved with the team that year, but it was a really fun game to watch. Uh, and having to scout every single match at Provincials, <laughs> uh, it was good that the game was exciting. It wasn't super boring. Uh, I actually kind of liked Logo Motion. Uh, I, I, I always found it kind of cool. He's like, you had to make the logo on the pegs. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. And now we have some interesting shaped blow ups in the back room. So <laughs> you, got, you guys still have logo motion tubes laying around? Wow. Yeah. yeah. We got a full I set. Seen, I, I haven't seen one of those in a minute. Are they still like blown up and everything? Yeah, they still hold air. Wow. It's impressive. Yeah. We have ringers uh, from 2007 that still hold air. Wow. I think the oldest game logic we have laying around is a 2008 trackball, I think, is still beating around. A, I don't know. We probably have some older stuff than some of the really older robots. but I got a five-point ball from 2004 at my parents' house. <laughs> That's going back a ways. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next question. Uh, Electronica1 would like to ask, uh, what was your first reaction to getting assigned to Curie this year? Is this a Shock joke? and awe. Are they, are, are they going to like yeah. reload this? I was convinced that they were going to change it. There was just so many themes. But. Yeah, we were, I remember there was like some data sheet. It was like comparing the highest... Uh, I can't remember. OPR? OPR yep. like from like Curry and then Tesla. And I was just like... Did, I, I understand it's randomized, but... Someone looked at this and said, "Yeah, this looks about right." And hit <laughs> yeah, <upload>. yeah. Someone <laughs> had to be okay with that happening. Yeah, I, I unfortunately, uh, first doesn't have a. It's not like districts where they are balancing any kind of ranking of the teams in any way. So that's just the way it happens sometimes. Like Newton in 2016, I think I'm sure Tyler remembers that one as well. <laughs> yeah, well, you was... guys weren't in that division. But... We we weren't, but we, we we saw it. I think they were next to us. I don't remember. We were because I was in the same division as you that year too. Were we Tesla that year? I don't remember. That was Tesla, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was Tesla. They were the next field over. Yeah. Um, uh, Raytham from eight sixty five would like to ask uh, any possible chance of going to regional in the future just for fun. Uh, like a third one. Uh yeah, I went. Yeah, I would assume it'd be like a third event. I don't think so. We would go to a third district long before we would go to a regional. Yeah. Oh, so so I guess to go to go to go from there. Then I mean, do you, have you guys thought about going to a third regional at all? Is that is it just a schedule thing for you guys, or a third district? I'm sorry, or just I mean, I know Ontario doesn't have the availability really for anybody to do it in Ontario, um, but would you try no, to go somewhere I mean, else? The scheduling wise, our season's already 
pretty full. I don't I don't think we would want to do. Um, I mean, the teams that do like th three districts and that do all these events, I, I don't know how they can balance their personal lives, professional lives. Oh, we don't. We don't. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, like... yeah, it's tough. It's really tough. Um, yeah. Let's see. Do you guys run, and this is from Snapsword, do you guys run your actual season drivers or new ones at off-season events? Uh, depends on the off-season. So if it's IRI and we have a graduating driver, IRI will be their last blast. Um, if it's uh, some postseason tournament in the fall, and we have a graduating driver, then we'll put we'll put someone new in. But usually IRI, we we keep the the season drive team, and then other other off seasons that we attend, we'll we'll do fresh drivers. Do you guys ever run? Do you guys ever run multiple teams at at off seasons other than IRI, obviously? Like for um, practice robot and the comp at all? This for so like so like other students can have experience or anything. Typically the practice robot is not functional by the time yeah, okay. we get there. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> it's tough. It's it's hours. We're, we're going through it this weekend for we have an all season this weekend and then we just we had to put a bunch of time into making sure the practice bot could like actually, you know, compete for a whole event. So yeah, yeah. it's a lot of effort. Yeah. Um all right. As a Thoth as a Toth, uh wants to ask, do you guys use ferrules? What type of crim solder tap connections do you use for can wires? Any quick disconnects used? Um, so we do use uh, ferrules for wheeled Mueller connectors. Sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Okay. So, so yeah, we do use ferrules. Um, for can, we do, on the practice robot, we use these like little plug in one end and plug in the other end and just connect. Um, the competition robot to get uh, shrink wrap to keep that all nice and tight. And then ferrules, um, we do use that for like our motor controllers. Uh, and yeah. yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, S. Ness Brasson uh, would like to ask why don't you have a chant? Nothing seems to really work. Like, yeah, it's, you. There's too many syllables in 2056, yeah. and just shouting OP doesn't really sound the ball. Quick note, OP does not stand for overpowered. Our school is Orchard Park, so it stands for Orchard Park Robotics, not overpowered. <laughs> I've never heard overpowered. Yeah. I didn't know anyone thought that. No. Uh, You're too old. I was saying in the chat earlier. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what did you say, Tyler? I say you're too old to get the reference. That must be it. Oh, what's that a reference to? Or is that what did people that's, used to that's say? That's what that? the kids do for games and stuff. Okay, yeah, I'm, that's going right over my head. Uh, so we're just about wrapped up on questions. Uh, I have one. I know that uh, I've had a couple of people ask me, and we actually, I know, Tyler, we asked you this a couple of years ago, actually, uh, is what do you guys do for your bumpers? Because I know so many people wonder, like, why, you know, the bumpers are shiny. You're one of the only teams that have ever had that. So, you know, what do you, what do you guys do for that? Is there a reasoning behind it? You know, do you guys nice want to go into that at all? Bumpers. Nice and pleathery. Isn't it? It's like the oh. canvas sort of stuff. And it's like, uh, you know, we put pool noodles and we, like, um, have, uh, we cut out pieces of lumber and then we, like, have the canvas that wraps around and we staple that on. And it's, we actually put, like, a little bit of, quite a bit of effort into those bumpers. Like, because we have to make, um, you know, one blue wood. We have to make, like, four sets, essentially, you know, like, you know, one two blues, two reds, one for practice, one for the competition bot. And then, you know, actually this year, some of them were kind of scuffed up. So we actually made new ones again for Worlds. So they looked really nice. And then they got beat up too. So Fresh bumpers. That's what it's yeah. all about. So, all right. So you guys do make new bumpers for Worlds. Because, like, I, I will – because we started doing the the shiny bumpers because we, we, you know, we got it from a sign shop to just print it so it gets the glossy finish and everything. And it worked out pretty well. But, like, I know by the time we got to Worlds, the corners definitely started to get kind of, like – it kind of like breaks down almost and it gets kind of worn. So, I mean, it didn't look too bad, but yeah, it seems like your guys are always clean. So I guess you just make a new set. So that explains it. Um, all right. Well, that I think is going to wrap us up. We already went over. So uh, if you had a question we didn't get to, I apologize, but we've only got so much time on the show. Uh, we are going to do our drawing for our second uh, giveaway of the 2056 swag packs. So, Tyler, if you want to roll for the winner on that. I can't. While I'm doing that, uh, Tyler Holtzman actually came up with a new chant for 2056, so I'm going to put it <laughs> on the spot. And, Tyler, do you mind saying the chant for us? Oh, it, with enthusiasm, please. Who are we? 
OP. <laughs> there we go. Bam, I actually just like have that. heard that one before. Uh, All right. Well, I mean, so, so Tyler, you should you should do it like Jim does for us. Where like after you win an event, you have to go up to your people in the stands and you have to do the who are we, and then you like do it and you have to yell as loud as he does. So you can oh, be that's super. Not possible. <laughs> So, so, chat, let us know uh, what you think. Uh, should uh, OP use that for their uh, chance in the future? If you have a better one, put that in chat. But with that said, we do have the fantastic uh, giveaway once again from our friends at 2056. And if you do win, please make sure you reach out to First Updates now, uh, either on our Discord or here on Twitch. And by the way, we'll put our Discord link in chat right there. There we go. Uh, to join up with the uh, close to 1,800 people now who are now in our Discord. But the winner for that is going to be... Yamo221, Yamo221, congratulations, a follower uh, on the channel, so no rig this time, but even non-subscribers can win too. So congratulations, Yamo221, make sure you reach out to me so we can get that out to you. And a big thanks to 2056 for supplying these pretty kick-ass giveaways uh, for today. All right, uh, before we finish up the show, uh, maybe if you guys will have anything you want to, you have coming up that you'd like to promote or uh, any takeaways you've had from the press season, I know you've got your... Uh, your 2056 ways to inspire like you talked about earlier on the show coming up so do you guys want to talk about the information for that yeah so we have our annual 2056 ways to inspire conference so it's at our school orchard park secondary school uh there will be i think a tweet if you follow us uh, explaining a little bit more details as the time comes around it's going to be saturday september 28th this year it's going to be about the whole day so there's going to be sessions in the morning then lunch and then sessions in the afternoon it's completely free anyone that they want to can come and join uh, you know, it, we're also always looking for new people that might want to talk about something in FRC. So it could just be, you know, like maybe my experience on the Einstein field or integrating robotics into the classroom. And if you're unable to join, you can check our website, which will have event, which will have all the presentations. So you can always check those out um, from previous years as well. And it's a good way to maybe meet some other meet some new people or just look at some stuff from other different people in the first community. Do you guys don't do you guys stream it at all? Uh, like I know sixteen seventy eight stream started streaming there. Mm -hmm. Is there has there been any talk of that? We haven't in the past. There has been lots of interest in it, but we we don't really have a streaming guy to kind of arrange all that. Sure. Um, if anyone wants to volunteer, we're more than willing. So. Awesome. All right, we'll look out for that. And, uh, and if not, then uh, it'll be on the website, like, uh, like Sarah said. So with that, uh, that is going to do it for tonight's show. Uh, we hope everyone out there watching enjoyed the new show, and uh, you learned a lot from it. I know I certainly did. Uh, well, I want to give a massive thanks to our awesome guests tonight from 2056 for volunteering to come on the show and giving us all so much information about what makes them so amazing. Uh, I, hope you had, I hope you guys had fun being on the show. Mm -hmm. We did, absolutely. It was. Yeah. All so right. with that said, we do have some awesome uh, supporters for the stream that we want to plug real quick. Uh, by the way, as Nick kind of alluded to, we will be streaming uh, The Big Bang this weekend uh, on fun. So make sure you go check that out. 33 is competing. There are some other fantastic teams. Actually, two 33s are competing there uh, with That's some other right. fantastic teams. But that will be streamed on fun. On Is that Friday and Saturday? Is that right, Nick? Uh, yep, Friday okay. and Saturday. Your boy will be drive coaching, so watch out. All right, well, you better watch out so no robots go through the gates or anything like that. So yeah. uh, and with that says, well, too, if you are an FTC fan, uh, we do have an FTC show tomorrow uh, with uh, Gluten Free and another uh, Strong World contender. I'm sorry, I, I forget the team number off the top of my head. But if you're into FTC, uh, check that out tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, supporters for the show, big shout out, lots of them, so we'll try to get through as quickly as possible. Uh, Dari was seven months to support PJ the Ref, 19 months total. Grump back Will, 10 months, ONG Robots 2 with uh, 20 months. Uh, Hakujin, 22 months. Plug, uh, plug H Walk uh, with the Prime Sub. Kunal King, 865, 7 months. McLass, 15 months. He's German, 4 months. is hyped. Uh, Tilt Shifted with the Prime Sub. Uh, Active uh, J with the Prime Sub. Com Master, 1018, 6 months. Says 6328 is cool. Caltran, 29 months of support. Says The Streak. Uh, RCAP, uh, 51, 9 months of support. Yellow 221 in 3 months. Uh, so, Yamal, oh, you resubscribed, so I guess you are a sub on here. Uh, Azatoss, seven months as a streak, baby. KVTV13 with the Prime Sub. Fleabop101 with Prime Sub. Snapsword, 
Prime sub, Mike Stark, four months, 27 months in a row. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Prime Sax, 135 with the Prime. Uh, Pikachu, 10th with the Prime. Uh, Road, 57. Uh, subscribe in two months as I'm a subscriber for many more anniversaries to come. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. OMG Robots, two. MathWiz, four uh, with some bits. And God of Curry, two months of support. Thank you, everybody. We need your help to keep fun, loud, live, and independent. We rely on your support uh, to make that happen. And we can't wait to have more great content for you this summer here on Fun with the Course. Uh, some awesome frc content ftc and lots of events we have over 15 events already scheduled going on if you're running an off-season event by the way uh reach out to us we will help uh promote and host you for free through the first updates now channel so reach out to us admin at firstupdatesnow.com or through our discord all right so with that said a huge thanks to our editor-in-chief tyler olds for producing tonight's show uh if you like this show or other content fun provides be sure to click that green follow button at the top of your screen top right uh, to keep up with all the shows and videos we post on Twitch, it'll let you know when we're going live, all that. And uh, and if you'd like to help support us, then please click that purple subscribe box uh, at the top. You might even have a free Twitch Prime sub available if your Amazon Prime account is linked to your Twitch. Um, so with that said, thanks a lot for watching FRC Deep Dive. If you have any suggestions on what teams you would like to see next on the show, check out our Discord uh, at the link that is in the chat. Uh, a big thanks to all of our mods in the chat as well. With that said, have a great night, and we will see you all next time on FRC Deep Dive. <laughs> we need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.